Classic Tales, Arabian Nights. The Tale of the Portress. The Portress began her story, revealing that she inherited a substantial fortune upon the passing of her father. Soon after, she married the wealthiest man in the city, but their happiness was short-lived. He died within a year, leaving her even richer. Her reputation for beauty and wealth spread throughout the city, and she indulged in making ten changes of raiment, each worth a thousand dinars. One day, a poor old woman approached her, pleading for her to attend her orphaned daughter's wedding. She explained that the presence of the portress would convince other esteemed ladies to attend. The portress, moved by the woman's plight, not only agreed to attend, but also offered to dress the bride in her finest garments and jewelry. The old woman promised to return at supper time to escort her. Dressed in her finest attire, the portress awaited the old woman, who soon arrived and guided her to a magnificent palace. Inside, in a grand hall, she met a very fair and beautiful young lady. This lady revealed that her brother had seen the portress at several gatherings and had fallen deeply in love with her. He had arranged for the old woman to bring her to the palace so they could meet. She assured the portress that her brother, a noble and handsome man, wished to marry her. The portress agreed to meet him, and the young lady introduced her to her brother. They conversed, and the portress found herself falling in love with him as well. Soon after, witnesses were brought in, and their marriage contract was drawn up. The young man, however, had a condition. She must vow never to look at, or talk to another man, and to never incline her body or heart towards any man other than himself. She swore to him, and they were married, living happily together for a month. One day, the portress asked her husband's permission to go to the bazaar to shop, and he consented. Accompanied by the old woman, she went to a shop recommended by her companion, where a young merchant had recently inherited great wealth. The old woman assured her that she would find everything she needed there. Despite her initial reluctance due to her vow, she relented and bought all the goods she sought. The young merchant refused her money, insisting the goods were a gift. When she tried to refuse, he proposed she pay him with a kiss. The old woman persuaded her to accept the kiss, arguing it wouldn't break her oath. Reluctantly, the portress agreed. However, when the young man kissed her cheek, he bit it, causing her to bleed, and she fainted. When she regained consciousness, she found the old woman worriedly tending to her. But the bazaar was already closed. The old woman advised her to feign illness to her husband and let her wound heal in three days. Upon returning home, her husband noticed her injury and inquired about it. She lied saying a merchant carrying firewood had struck her. He threatened to ban all fuel merchants from the city, causing her to panic and change her story, claiming she fell from a donkey and hit a glass fragment. He then threatened to kill all donkey boys, prompting her to beg him not to harm anyone. Realizing her lies, her husband accused her of breaking her vow. Despite her pleas, he ordered his bodyguards to detain her and kill her. The old woman intervened, begging for her life. Finally, her husband relented, deciding to mark her instead. He beat her with a rod. Then his bodyguards returned her to her previous home. For four months, she stayed home, recovering from her wounds. When she tried to return to her husband's home, she found it had disappeared. She sought refuge with her sister from a different mother, and they decided to live together. Soon after, they were joined by their other sister. Their youngest sister would go into town daily to fetch their needs until one day, 
She brought back a porter, allowing the three calendars and the disguised merchant into their home. The caliph was amused and asked the eldest sister about the genie who had turned her sisters into dogs. She revealed that the genie had left her a lock of hair, which, when burned, would summon her immediately. The caliph burned the hair, and the genie appeared in the form of a young woman. The caliph asked her to release the two black dogs to their original forms and to identify the man who had wronged the portress. The genie agreed, transforming the dogs back into humans. She revealed that the portress's husband was the caliph's son. The caliph summoned his son, reprimanded him, and renewed his marriage to the portress. The eldest sister and her two older sisters were married to the three calendars, who were made the caliph's counselors. The youngest sister married the caliph himself. And thus, the caliph resolved their problems. As Shasherazad concluded the story, her sister Dunyazad eagerly asked for another tale.